Hello friend, welcome to Marine Engineering Hub. This is Ravi Gupta. Today we are going to talk about fuel oil system. First I am going to show you how the fuel oil is prepared from crude oil to the heavy fuel oil which is used in bunker. After that I will show you the fuel oil system and then I will show you a different component in the fuel oil system and why it is provided and for what reason it is there. All that thing will be explained here. So remain tuned till last you will learn a lot I guarantee it. So let's begin the video with uh, first the process. So as you can see this is the crude oil which is been extracted from the seabed or you can say from the land bed and that crude oil is been subjected to the furnace and the gases through the atmospheric distillation plant various gases such as gasoline, kerosene, natural gas and gas oil is been extracted which is been used for several different purposes. Now the residue which is left behind is further sent to a second distillation process which is called vacuum distillation plant through vacuum distillation plant. In vacuum distillation plant the vacuum gas oil is extracted and other gases is been emitted and after that Further, the waxy distillate is sent to a catalytic cracker and the heavy residue which has been left after vacuum distillation plant is sent to the thermal cracker. And the extract from the catalytic cracking and the thermal cracking is being stored here in a tank. That oil which is left behind of the, all the residue is called heavy fuel oil. And that oil is used as a bunker in ship. So, by this you can get an idea that through various distillation process, the left over oil, the foremost bad quality oil, which can't be burned or which can't be burned in a land, that is been utilized by the ship bunker to burn it because of its system. So, I have given you the idea now at what type of oil we are burning in a ships. Now let's see to burn this uh, type of oil having heavy residues to make it burnable to make it combustible it need to heat up in a proper temperature and it need to maintain correct viscosity during the time of injection so that it can have a proper atomization and proper combustion and we can extract the maximum amount of energy for that various process is been done from heavy oil service tank to injection so let's see first what happened through a purification method the oil is collected in a settling tank which is not shown here and from settling tank it is passed through a purifier and the oil is purified further where the residues which can be removed to such an extent by a purifier is removed and is stored in a heavy oil service tank and that oil is then passed through a quick closing valve to a set of filter to supply pump so you can say from heavy filler service tank the oil is supplied to a supply pump via set of filter and that pump is building up a pressure of around 4.5 to 5 bar that pressure oil is sent to a auto backwash filter which also further filter the oil residues after that the oil is passed through a flow meter to meter the amount of oil which has been consumed and after that is collected in a buffer tank. Now the oil which is collected in buffer tank is now passed through a circulating pump where the pressure is increased around 10 to 12 bar. That amount of oil is now sent through a set of heater. Okay, so here the oil pressure is 100 sorry 10 bar and the temperature is around 90 to 80, 85 now through a set of heater 
depending upon the viscosity of oil either it is 380 CST 180 CST or 720 CST the oil is subjected to heating and the amount of heating is been controlled via viscotherm basically the viscotherm is a device which whose aim is to maintain proper viscosity and for that maintaining the viscosity how much heating is required that is been controlled by viscotherm so the oil is sent from a circulating pump to a heater whose heating is controlled by viscotherm and the oil is heat up in such a way that it is around 15 to 13 one three to one five CST okay now the oil of 13 to 15 CST is then passed through this hot filter and after that it goes through a fuel pump via inlet rail and through fuel pump the oil is pressurized from 10 to 11 bar to 250 to 300 bar and that is been injected through injector inside the main engine having viscosity of 13 to 15 CST if in normal scenario if you want to know the temperature then in 180 CST we maintain around 115 to 120 degrees Celsius and if it is 320 CST then we maintain further more temperature around 130 to 135 and as the CST will increase the temperature for heating for maintaining the correct viscosity is increased so I hope you get the basic idea how the oil has come to the fuel injection now after injection the amount of oil which has been not utilized is returned back through a pressure control valve via to a buffer tank so in synopsis you can say that from heavy fuel oil service tank the oil is passed through a set of filter through a supply pump and via supply pump the oil goes to the auto backwash filter via auto backwash filter it is passed through a flow meter and then collected in a buffer tank from a buffer tank it is passed through a circulating pump and from circulating pump through a set of heater it is passed through another hot filter and from hot filter it goes to a fuel pump and then to the injection and the amount of oil is which is not utilized is returned back through a pressure control bulb to a buffer tank now this is the line which has been used for injection purpose and the pressure variation you can see that till buffer tank the pressure is around 4.5 to 5 bar and temperature is around 90 to 95 degree or 85 to 95 degree celsius you can say and from buffer tank the oil is further pressurized and from here the pressure is 10 to 11 bar and from here the oil is heated up and from here the temperature of oil is depending upon the viscosity of oil the centrist stock of oil and main purpose of viscotherm is to maintain the CST that is 13 to 15 CST for injection purpose okay so you can say for 180 CST it is 115 to 120 degrees Celsius at 13 to 15 CST and from there it is going there so I hope you understand how a fuel oil system is working now let's see the different component of fuel oil system so as you can see this is the inlet line and this is the outlet line okay this is the line this is the inlet line and this is the outlet line the amount of oil which is used for injection is been here and the amount which is not been utilized is turning back through this and also for as you know when the engine is shut down at that time to ensure that the fuel oil is circulated till the tip of the fuel injector a recirculation line is provided in the injector so that recirculation line is this one okay this one which is recirculating the oil till the tip of the injector and ensuring that the whole line is been heated up and no thermal stress occur if the engine is started okay now this is a back pressure valve to maintain the fuel oil pressure at a required setting on this system about 8 bar there is a back pressure control valve fitted on the return line so what is that here this is a back pressure valve which is been pressured so that this line is always pressurized around 8 bar and when the pressure is more than 8 bar of this return line then only it will lift and then only it will allow the oil to pass here okay I hope you understand now one more thing I want to tell you for changeover 
means whenever we are going to a sika area or ika area in that case we need to change to a lower grade means a higher good quality of oil like do oil mgo mdo that change over connection is provided here okay now as you can see this is a buffer tank this buffer tank is basically provided as you can see here so that to ensure that the correct amount of metering of how much amount of oil is consumed and the buffer tank will allow the flow meter to enter the oil only when the amount of oil in the buffer tank is reduced to a certain value if it is not reduced the flow meter will not move okay and as you can see here there is two things relief valve and air release valve i will show you in diagram this is the relief valve and this is the air vent valve the air vent valve is flowed in such a way it is float operated it will vent out the any air which has been entrapped in the system and the relief valve is provided so that it will lift up if any sudden pressurization variation occur in the system and it will return back it to the service tank now this is the fuel oil flow meter and in case suppose we need means in the fuel line flow meter also consists of a set of filter if you see here a set of filter will be provided so that filter need to be clean for time to time in that case if we have to bypass the fuel oil flow meter we will close the valve and we will clean the filter here it is not shown here a filter is provided also here in that case we have to bypass it and in that case this bypass arrangement is provided and moreover as you can see here this uh, means suppose in some cases the flow meter become faulty for that reason also this bypass arrangement comes into action okay now back pressing filter i will make a video about the back pressing filter in a detailed way it will be uploaded in the next week so i am giving a synopsis here only it is provided so that any particle impurities present in the fuel oil can be removed and it consists of a 10 to 25 micron filter which filter away the impurities and help self cleaning which activate on the pressure differential across the filter so basically what i mean to say is this this is the auto backwash filter and this is a standby filter means what happen this auto backwash filter having a 10 to 25 micron filter which further clean the any impurities which is present in the fuel oil now suppose we have to clean it after a period of time though it has a self cleaning self cleaning technique but we have to clean it after a period of 2 or 3 months in that case this manual filter comes into action we bypass it and this comes into action this is basically 50 to 100 micron okay and it will allow the oil to pass and for time being we will clean that thing okay this uh, auto backwash filter have a self cleaning technique which work on a differential pressure across the line that i will take means uh, tell you about detail in my next upcoming video now as you can see this is a changeover valve which uh, we can operate i have shown you already in the diagram this is the fuel oil supply pump this is the supply pump filter line filter and this is the supply pump okay so this is a basic arrangement which is provided and as you can see this filter is not in need to be clean after a specific running period of time and for in that time we change over the pump okay and this is now we are coming to a visco thumb so what happened as you can see this is the temperature measurement for the oil which is entering the visco thumb means basically what is happening now how a visco thumb work basically what happened the oil which is entering here suppose the oil which is entering here okay that oil temperature is being measured from this point means a tapping is provided from here means oil which is coming out that tapping is provided and that tapping is compared with the visco thumb okay and now depending upon the temperature what will happen it will measure temperature and it will see that how much is the cst of that oil if the cst is more it means it requires more heating so that it can be reduced to a 
lower value. Basically, the main aim of the visco thumb is to maintain CST. Means, suppose what happened if we need to maintain 15 CST, and we have found that the outlet temperature of the the outlet temperature here is suppose 105, and we have seen that the temperature is around 105 and CST is 20. But we want 15 CST. So what we will do? We will heat up the further. We will open the steam more. We will open the steam more so that the oil can be further heated. And when the oil will further heated, it will become less viscous and hence its viscosity will decrease and it will come to around 15 CST. That amount of control for the steam valve is been done by visco thumb. So let's see here. You will come to understand. So as you can see, this is the temperature measurement. And this is the setting where we can manually enter how much amount of CST we want. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is the viscotherm valve which is regulating the amount of steam, which is regulating the amount of steam by moving the regulating spindle up and down so that to control the steam flow to ensure that correct CST is maintained by variating the amount of steam flow. As from the picture, it can be seen that the amount of steam required for maintaining correct temperature is varied by the viscothumb by moving the regulating spindle up and down, which increases or decreases the steam flow of the fuel oil heater. So I hope you understand. Basically, the viscothumb is regulating the steam flow so that the temperature is being varied such that correct viscosity is maintained. Now. Here as you can see this is a hot filter. Why it is called hot filter? Because it is coiled with a steam coil around it and it has been then insulated to preserve that heat. Basically it is provided to remove the catalytic fines such as ammonia and silica which can't be removed and certain amount is present though after catalytic cracking process. To remove catalytic fines such as ammonia and silica Hot filter is provided after the circulation pump just before entry to the fuel pump. I will show you in the diagram. You will have a better, better idea. This, this is the hot filter. This is basically provided so that it can remove the catalytic fines. How the catalytic fines is coming? This is a catalytic cracking process. Though after having catalytic cracking process, the ammonia and silica is in burned out, but it's still a small amount of is inevitable and still it getting mixed up with the remaining residual oil. That oil, that filter is helping to remove the ammonia and silica via greater extent. Though it can't be removed fully but to a certain extent. So I hope you have understood the various component and uh, you have understood the concept of the fuel oil system. If you find this video very educative, so please do a favor for me. Please subscribe the channel and please hit the like button. And if you have any doubt regarding fuel oil system, you can comment below. I will reply. And please wait for the upcoming video. In next video, I will be uploading about the cooling water system. And after that, I will, as I have told you, I will also uploading about the backwash filter. So please remain tuned. You will learn a lot through this channel. Please subscribe. Thank you friend. Have a good day.